Welcome to lecture 2D of the Computer Architecture and Microprocessor Systems um, course. Um, here you'll be looking at um, sequential logic design. Now, um, throughout this course, we first of all started with, um, I think, transistors. So, started with transistors. And then we looked at how to combine transistors um, to design logic gates so from transistors. We looked at some um, designs of transistors using logic gates. And then from there, we move on to how to use logic gates to design combinational logic. Combinational logic. So we use logic gates to design combinational logic. And we also use um, logic gates um, together with some combinational logic to design um, our memory elements. Memory elements. So now we are going to see what sequential circuits are. For we saw that um, combinational logic could not remember, so we needed um, um, to design um, a circuit that um, could remember, or we needed to combine um, some logic with the combination logic to design our memory elements. So now we are going to look at circuits that actually remember, and then these are what we call the sequential logic logic. And then uh, this is the sequential logic design um, section of course right now yet uh, again this is the high level goal um, for this course is that we will be able to at the end of uh, the semester design uh, a simple single cycle processor and then we have seen the memory elements for the mix up memory elements and then we have seen what makes up a register file so for now we can design um, a memory element or Every data file from the scratch. We've also seen some combinational logic, and then the combinational logics are used in the in the design of the arithmetic logic units. So for for now, we can design components like the memory, the two of them, one for storing instruction and one for storing uh, data. And then we can design the register file, and then we can also design the ALU. Now let's see what we're going to be looking at is how to control or how all of these components within the single cycle processor. Are actually controlled. That is the focus of um, of this lecture. All right. So now we've seen combination logic, and then we've seen that um, combination logic depends on only the current inputs. Once an input comes in, we get once an input comes in, we get an output. Right. Now, so combination logics do not remember. Once input comes in, the output comes out. Once input comes in, the output comes out. But it doesn't remember the the, the previous um, inputs that were actually used. So here we want to be able to design um, some circuits uh, that can actually remember, right? So we have the inputs and then we have memory elements. We've seen how combination logic works. We've seen how memory elements work. So we combine combination logic with memory elements. Um, the the outputs of the combination logic are fed into the memory elements, and then the memory elements will store these uh, outputs and then feed it back as inputs to the combinational logic right and then together with the current input you will get an output so this is just what is known as um sequential circuit and then this circuit will, is actually designed to be able to remember its past inputs right, right so now um combination logic is like um the it's like this uh, padlock here we all know that um for this kind of padlock all you need to do is get um, the combination right just tune in uh, or just uh, tune this um this components here to the right password and then it will be opened what happens is that once um if the password is for instance one 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 and then you tune in, and then you tune this part to one, this part to one, this part to one, this part to one. The parallel will just open. Um, the once the parallel lock is open, and then you close it, you you have to tune it to those same passwords for it to open again. So here, the current input is what is used to open the parallel lock. Right? The this circuit does not remember anything. Just 
using the parents input is what will open or close or the part uh, the padlock now this is how uh, combination logics work now we have sequential logic now you have um, a more sophisticated a more sophisticated kind of password okay this is a more sophisticated um, kind of um, padlock right so here we have to tune to the right combination for instance we tune to the left or to, tune to the right right and then we tune again to the left or tune to the right again and tune to the left again to the, the, the right again based on the password so the password could be tuned left uh, by uh, 20 tune right by 10 tune left by by 10 or whatever so here with this kind of um, parallel what happens is that the the input that that we already entered before for instance if if for, for instance if the password is um, the password is r10 then l5 then r20 it means that we have to tune to the right by and then to the number 10 tune left to the number 5 and then tune right to the number 20 right so it means that the circuit or um, this design has to remember r10 r5 and then r20 within a system within a system right so this is what we call the um, a form of a sequential circuit or this is how a sequential circuit work because um, it remembers the past um, input given to it which is r10 l5 and then r20 right now in order for a sequential circuit or for this uh, padlock to actually open it has to remember past events now for instance let's take it that um the past code um is um r13 so means that you are tuning left you are tuning right to 13 l22 and then um r3 r3 this um this padlock has to go through a number of states right it, it has to be in a number of states before it can open so the first thing is that we have um, a state a right in state a what has happened is that um, the lock is not open it is locked because no relevant operation is done so if no relevant operation is done we say we are in state a right now for we to open this padlock what must happen um, we must move into another state which is state b now state b just means that um, the 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 padlock is still locked but the user or someone has tuned to r so now we have moved from state a to state b right it means that somebody has tuned to r which is the first um, password right next is um, another state which is state c right from state b we move to state c the c just means that um the person has tuned another right password which is l right so now in this state it means that we we have tuned to the we have tuned r13 and then l22 right now from there we move into the last state which is unlock so in this state the uh, the part lock is unlocked why is it unlocked because the person has tuned to r3 which is another right password so in this state it means that instead the, the person has tuned to r has tuned r13 r l22 and r3 and then this state the output of this state just means that um the the padlock is unlocked so the person has been able to unlock the password by going through a number of states right we went from state a state b state c and then state b now all the states here uh, the a b c d are actually relevant for the password to be open we have to go through the states and then each state um, explains what has happened right and then each state gives uh, what input the user actually uh, inputted into the system and then it gives what has happened uh, to the output is it locked uh, in this instance is it locked or is it unlocked so the outputs are just locked 
unlocked right and then the inputs are the passcodes passcode the r13 l22 and then the r3 right so it means that to open the state we have to go through um, from a to d then the most important thing here is that if anything happens once somebody has tuned r13 rl22 and then a wrong code is entered let's say here l5 is entered it means that we have to go back to state a so if somebody tunes um, R13, we move to state B. If somebody tunes L22, we move to state um, state C. And if somebody again tunes, let's say L5, this L5 is a wrong code. We need R3, but the person has tuned uh, L5. It means that we have to go back to state A and start all over again. So that is how the state machine works. Uh, we have some initial states that if anything happens, it goes to that state. So this is the state A, which is the, the second state, is also known as the initial state. Right, so this is the state diagram of this part. Okay, right. Now, the stick, what does the state diagram consist of? The state diagram consists of a, to draw a state diagram, you just have to draw a circle, and then the circle will represent the state. You just name it state A. So this is our first state, or our initial state, state A. Now, inside, um, Inside the circle is the output. So here we have locked. So in state A, the output is locked. So locked will be inside here. And then we have ax, ax here, which represents the input. So here, um, for instance, if somebody tunes R13, then we have to move out of this state, right? If somebody, it means that somebody has tuned R13, we move out of this state into another state and then if um, if uh, once we're in state a which is the initial state and somebody tunes anything other rather than um, rather than r13 then we remain in this state if anything happens rather than somebody tuning r13 we remain in this state so this acts um, indicates our input or what input the user has entered right so here simply is that um, we are in state a right and then inside um in state a the output is locked right and if anybody thinks anything rather than um, r13 we remain in state a now if somebody tunes r13 which is a correct password which is a correct passcode right we move into the state locked we move into state B, which is still locked. The output of the state is still locked because the person has not gotten all the sequence right, right? But once we're in state um, B, which is locked, if anybody tunes anything rather than L22, we have to move back to state A. And then if the person or anybody tunes L22, we move into state C. State C is still locked, but it means that the person has entered another correct uh, passcode. Now in state C, the output is locked. If somebody tunes anything other than um, R, uh, other than R3, we move into the state A again. But if anybody tunes R3, we have to move straight into state D. And then in state D, the uh, the padlock is actually opened. So inside state D, if anything happens, then we move. Rather than uh, it being R13, they we move into, into state log. But if we are in state D and then somebody tunes again R13, we have to go back to state B, right? It means that it is another correct passcode. So we go to state B and then the cycle continues again. So anytime a correct passcode um, is entered, we move to state B and then the cycle continues again. So this is what is known as the state diagram. Now we have, um, in terms of states, uh, or in terms of state machines, uh, we have um, we have asynchronous and then we have synchronous state machines, right? Or synchronous machines, or generally synchronous machines, or asynchronous machine. Um, the pass, uh, uh, the part, the part log example we just saw is an example of a synchronous machine. Right. Now, why is it asynchronous? It is asynchronous because it is not controlled 
but there is no timing involved in it, right? Right, so the passcode example we saw is just um, asynchronous. It's asynchronous machine, right? It's asynchronous because there's no kind of timing to it. There's once the out once once the correct sequence is uh, is um is, is tuned, the output uh, the padlock is open, so there's no timing to it. Now um um the timing means that um we saw what um, a clock does in a digital data system. A clock is used to actually control our outputs, uh, as we saw in the DFF flop. Uh, when a, um, an input comes in, um, the input is actually stored or latched uh, on the DFF flop um, based on a clock. So in in terms of um, timing, we are talking about uh, using a clock to control the entire operation. So for the padlock example, there's no clock involved. So anytime an input comes in, an output just becomes a correct sequence. Is, is, it's, it's actually inputted, um, the output just comes out, so there's no clock involved. Then we have also synchronous machines in which um, there is actually a clock involved, right? It means that uh, there is uh, some kind of timing involved in uh, um, within the system. For instance, if we take um, a typical traffic light, for instance, if for a traffic light changes from um, red to yellow, To green, right? So if you have a traffic light like this, in which um, you need some kind of time for it to change from red to yellow. For instance, we take like five seconds. Um, it changes from red to yellow, then from yellow to green, five seconds, and then from green back to red again. So this kind of um, system designed that uh, designed in a way that that the light changes every five seconds will be what is called a synchronous system because we're using a clock to control it every five seconds the light changes so a traffic light designed this way is an example of a synchronous system and then a lot of machines nowadays um, are actually made with um, synchronous system like a lot of microprocessors the microprocessors or well, the microprocessor we'll be designing will be made of, of will be a synchronous machine right Now let's see an example of um, a state diagram. How do we draw the state diagram properly, right? So we, we are going to use um, what is known as the Swiss traffic light. The Swiss traffic light actually has four states. I think most traffic lights have um, red, green, yellow, but for the Swiss, they have four states. So which are the states in, within the Swiss traffic light? We have state um, green, we have state um, yellow, we have state um, red, and then we have state red and yellow. Okay, so that is the states within the Swiss um, traffic lights. Now, the Swiss traffic light actually it follows a sequence, um, which is like this: we move from state A which is green to yellow to red which is um, and then to yellow and red and then from yellow and red we have to move back to state a, uh, green so here green is state a yellow is state b um, red is state c and then yellow and, and red is state d so we move and after that once we get to state d we have to move back <coughs> To state A, which again, as I said, we need we always need an initial state um, when we are drawing state diagrams. Which so here our state A is our initial state, right? So now to control this um, kind of um, this um, this sequence, we need a, a clock, right? And then we've seen what a clock is. It changes from one to zero, zero to one, and stuff like that. And we we know what the clock to read. So we are going to use a clock to control this um, this state machine or this um, this state. When the state or when should the state transition from one state to another? We are going to use a clock to do that, right? Now 
now um, before we um, we go back to our traffic light um, example let's see what a final state machine is um, this is a very important concept when it comes to digital circuit design so a final state machine is um, a discrete time model of state parameters as we saw within the state the final state machine will actually define how um, each state or each state um, um, transitions right and then what is happening or what must happen for each state to actually transition right so FLSMs are actually used um, in traffic lights. They are using in the design of traffic lights, elevators, microprocessors. Um, you will be seeing um, the pictorial view of how a traffic light looks like very soon. But I try, uh, for air uh, of what an FSM looks like very soon. But an FSM consists of um, um, a total of um, five kind of elements, right? So now the first element is the the a finite number of states. Right, yeah, we saw state A, state B, this, these are what the states are about. So, and then the state indicates um, what, what is happening within the system or what has happened within the system. Right, it also has a, a number of external outputs, it has a finite number of um, external inputs, and then it has um, external outputs, um, and then it has an explicit specification of all the state transitions, um, how to get from one state to another. And it also has an explicit specification of what determines each external output value, right? All right, so each FSM consists of um, three separate parts. We have what is called the next stage logic, um, what, what um, circuits must um, must be executed or what circuits um, determines what the next state is. It also has a state register, right? And then it has the output logic, right? So this is essentially how um, an FSM circuit is designed. We have our next stage logic, we have the state register, then we have our output logic. Now from here, you can see that the next stage logic, the input to the next stage logic are uh, the inputs that we that a user gives it and then also the state as can be seen here the state is uh, is fed back into the next state logic and then we can see that for the output or for the output and um, the output logic um the input to the uh, output logic is only the state right so here this is one example of um, how is uh, a state machine is designed and then this kind of state machine is what is known as the more machine now in the more machine the output logic or the output uh, logic depends on only the current state so this state only the current state is involved now when we take our inputs and then we feed it back into the output logic or to serve as an input to output logic this is what we call the main machine you'll be seeing the diagram very soon but uh, it is essential to know that we have two types of state uh, two types of FSM design. We have one which is the more machine, and then we have one which is the melee machine. Melee, so more and melee. So what we have here is the more machine. In the more machine, the only difference between the more machine and the melee machine is the outputs, right? In the more machine, the outputs uh, is actually um, determined by only the current state this state but in the mail machine the output is actually determined by both the current state and the inputs right now here with both types of state machine the mail and more the next stage logic is actually uh, the input to the next stage logic is always the input and then the current state so this is fixed for, for any type of state machine the next state is determined by the current inputs at the same time the the current state, right? That is how we determine the next state logic in any state machine, right? Now, the important thing to note here is that um, at the beginning of the clock cycle, the next state, the value of the next state will be latched into the state register. So yeah, at the beginning of every clock cycle, that is when the next state um, will be stored by the state register. So the next state actually becomes the state, 
at the beginning of every clock cycle. So it's very important to note that. So now uh, I've already said that the sequential circuit is made up of the state register. This here. The input to the state register is the next state, and then the output to the state register is the current state or simply the state. Right now, um, at the beginning of every clock cycle, the next state is latched or is stored um, or makes or becomes available to the state. So the next state changes to the state at the beginning of every clock cycle or is stored by the state register. Right. And we, have, we also have combinational logic. The next stage logic um, within uh, the, the FSM is combinational logic, right? And then the output, um, the output logic is also combinational logic. Now, um, I've already explained that um, we have two types of, of state machine: the more machine and then the middle machine. For the more machine, uh, the difference between the more machine and the middle machine is that for the more machine, the output logic, uh, the input to the output logic is only the state, right? So it means that the output depends on only the current state. For the middle machine, the input to the output logic is the input together with the state, right? So the output for a middle machine depends on both the state and then the current inputs, right? Now let's take um, a simple example and see how the FSM is designed. We are going to design um, an, or we are going to take an example which is a smart traffic light controller. Now what is the smart traffic light controller about? The smart traffic light controller has two inputs. The inputs to the smart um, traffic light controller are the traffic sensors, right? We have the sensors TA and to be right we have two sensors um, ta and um, to be right to a to be now these sensors are available on each lane as it can be seen so we have ta on this lane and to be on this lane so now what this sensors do is that they sense whether there is traffic or not so when there is uh, traffic the sensors will be high right when there is traffic the sensors will be high or they will uh, give off um, a one logic right so they'll be high if there's no traffic the sensors will be low right so the sensors are used to sense traffic if there's traffic the sensors will be high if there is no traffic the sensors will be low right now this smart um, traffic light also has two outputs strips which are the lights on each lane so we have traffic light LA on this lane and traffic light LB on this lane. So we have two lights LA and LB and then the lights changes and the lights have um, colors red, green, red, yellow and green and then which changes from, from time to time. Now the condition here is that the state can change or the, the state of the lights can change every five seconds. Right. So we have red, um, yellow, green right so these are the traffic lights the colors of the traffic lights and then it changes from red to yellow yellow to green and then from green up to red this changes must happen every five seconds right now we have a condition here we must if everything is okay we must change every five seconds red yellow green Five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. That's what I did. But if a traffic light on each on any lane, so if for this lane the traffic light is green, right? That is for this lane. The traffic light LB is green, and then the sensor on this traffic light, which is TB, is high. It means that there is traffic on that lane. If there is traffic on any lane, and then the traffic light is green. The traffic light should stay green that is the condition right so for this lane if this on this lane the light la on this lane is green and then the sensor uh, ta is high it's one right it's high it means that we stay within the traffic light stays green 
until there's no traffic until the sensor um, senses that there's no traffic and then the sensor value changes from one to zero and then the traffic light can change to yellow then subsequently to uh, to then it can change from uh, green to red right so that is um our the statement we need so uh, each time uh, you'll be given a statement like this and then you'll be asked to draw um, or you have to use you have to implement this statement using an, an fsl right so first of all what you must do is that giving a statement like that is this uh, you have to first of all define or uh, draw your block diagram this is the first step when you're giving a statement like that and then in your block diagram you have to define what the inputs are for the smart traffic like we have two inputs ta and tb which are the sensors right sensors on lane a the sensors a sensor on lane b you have to also define your outputs we have two outputs la and then lb and then normally we have a clock which we control the system and a reset reset is very important in digital systems because um anytime you want to start up a system you have to press on the reset then the reset will initialize or send our system into an initial state though that initial state is defined and then from that initial state then we move on to uh, all the other states based on the inputs that have that is supplied to our system so the reset in the digital system is very really important without the reset um, once the system starts um, it starts from an arbitrary state. We don't know where it's starting from, right? But we have to always design our system with a reset always in mind, right? So as I said, we have uh, the inputs are the clock and then the reset and then TA and TB. Our outputs are LA and LB. So now, alright. So now we're going to design our it, uh, the final statement in our FSM, but now we have to choose which one to use the merely or the more. And uh, which one to use will actually um, change the circuit, uh, the underlying circuit, but it will still operate the same, right? So, in here we are using the more FSM. Now, in the more FSM, um, the states or the outputs are labeled within the state, right? So, we start off with states S0. So we, we are going to label states S0 as our initial state. So now what happens in our initial state? What happens is that the traffic um, light on LA on this lane, on lane LA is green, and the traffic light on lane LB is red. So this is the state we are starting from. And then this is our reset state, state S0. Anytime we reset the system or anytime something goes wrong within the system, the, uh, the state it will fall back on is the state S0 and then in state S0 LA is green LB is red now in state S0 um, our inputs are the traffic sensors which are TA and TB right but once um, we are on this lane we are on state LA is green right if state LA is green and then our TA which is the sensor on that lane we only care about the sensor on a particular lane the sensor on the other lane is not taking care is not taking into consideration if we are if we are within um, another lane so if you're within this lane uh, what we care about is the sensor on that lane because the sensor b is not connected um, to this lane it's always connected to this lane so we are looking at this lane if ta the sensor on a is high once in digital system once you see ta means that it has the value of one or the sensor has the value of one if we have ta bar it means that the sensor has a value of zero right so once you see ta it means that we have a value of one or ta has a value of one or ta is high if you see ta bar it means that ta has a value of zero or ta is high it's low right so if we are in state s0 which in which um, la is green and then lb is red and then our ta is high 
the condition we gave is that once we are in a lane and then the sensor on that lane um, is high, it means that there's traffic. So it means that we stay within that lane. So that's why you see the arc being um, um, routed to the same S0. So we stay within the lane. And if the any time the sensor changes or when time TA uh, goes to zero, so that is TA bar. So it means that TA is low. It means that the sensor has changed value from one to zero. Then we have to move to state two. In state two, you know that in traffic light, um, you move from green to yellow to red, right? So green to yellow to red. So that's normal operation of the traffic light. So once LA is green here, um, we will move the state from green to yellow, right? But LB is still red. And then we, are, we now have a new state, which is state S1. Now within state S1, we don't care about the values of the sensors because once we have moved, uh, once one lane has moved from green to yellow, it means that the next is that that lane will go to red. So we have gone into state two in which LA is red and then LB, which was red, has changed to green, right? So now we are on this lane, right? The B lane. Now within the B lane, if the sensor on the B lane is high and then LB is green, it means that we have to stay within that lane. That's why we have the arc here showing. Now, when the sensor on that lane goes low, right? Then it means that there's no traffic and then we have to move into another state, which is state S3. Now, in this state S3, you see that LB will have to change from green to yellow, right? Green to yellow, but LA still stays red. So that is state S3. And once we are in state S3, once one, the traffic light on the lane has changed from green to yellow, automatically we have to go to LA being green, right? Right, so now we go into state S0 again. So we are moved from state S3 to S0, but we don't care about the sensor input, right? So now in state S0 again, LA is green and LB is red, right? So this is simply what is known as the state diagram. So you are given a statement, you draw, first of all, draw your block diagram, and then you analyze the statement, and then you have to draw your state diagram, and then this is a more state diagram. In the more state diagram, the outputs are within the state. If I take this state, the outputs are located within the state. In a merely FSM, the, up, the outputs are, are on the axe, right? So you have your input and then you have your, your, your input and the output on the axe, but not inside uh, the state. So that's the difference between the merely and then the more state diagram, state diagrams, right? Now, after you've had your state diagram, right, which is, which is here, we have to draw what is known as our state transition table, right, state transition table. Our end goal of this whole thing is that we are going to design a circuit that looks like this. We have a next state logic, output logic, and then state register. So it should look like this, but what is, what is made up or what makes up in this state logic that is what the state transition diagram is used for now in the state once you look at um, your fsm circuit here you see that our next state our next state here actually depends on our inputs and then our state so now we have in our next stage, uh, in, in our next stage what we, we are able to determine is our next state right which is here our next state and then our next state depends on our state our current state right here current state and then our current inputs the inputs are ta and tb our state is s right so now what how do we find the next state now here we just name or we just give s prime as the next state right so the, the next state is looking at both s which is the current state ta which is the input one input and TB, which is another input, right? So here, so here we start from state S0, right? State S0. Now, what are, within state S0, what are the, the inputs? The input is TA, but um, 
in state A0, we see that there are there is no um, TB, right? So it means that we just make it a donkey in digital systems um, or within the uh, truth tables where um, we have um, values like um, one, which indicates that um, uh, which indicates a high or a three volts. We have a zero, which indicates a zero volts. We have um, an X. This X indicates that we don't care about the value. The value could be the value uh, could be one. It could be zero. But it just means that we do not care about this value. It's irrelevant to us. And then we have state Z. Uh, this state Z just means we saw uh, like a, the output of a tri-state buffer. Uh, this state Z means that um, the the state uh, is in a high impedance or the value is at a high impedance or is floating there's no value connected to it so we have mainly four states a1 0 x and then a high impedance so any time we see an x it means that we don't care about that value that value is irrelevant to us we don't actually care about it so if we take a look at um, state a0 here we don't actually care about tb tb cannot be found if tb is irrelevant in state a0 now if state s0 if we instead S0 and TA is 0, right? If TA is 0, what happens? We move to state S1. So in our next state, in our transition diagram, our next state will be here will be S1, right? So we have moved from state S0 to S1. Now, if we are in state S0 again, and then our input is a 1 from our state diagram, we can see that if our input is a 1, we stay at state A0, right? So if our input is a 1, we stay at state A0. So we can use this logic to go through all the states. Now we have to move to state S1. In state S1, right, which is here, you see that um, in state S1, we do not care about both TA and TB. There's no TA and TB here, so we do not care about them. As long as we are in state S1, we move straight to state S2. As you can see here, the state in state S1, we move straight to state S2. Now, once we come to state S2, yeah, we do not care about the input TA. So TA is a don't care. But when our TB is a zero, when TB is zero, we move to state S. We are in state S2. And then if TB is zero, we move to state S3, as can be seen here. And then if you are in state S2 and then TB is one, it means that there's still traffic or the sensor is high. It means that there's still traffic. We stay in state S2. That's why we have S2 here. Now, we move to state S3. In state S3, we do not care about the inputs, TA and TB. So we don't care, don't care. And as long as we are in state S3, our next state is automatically S0. So this is how simply you, you design your state transition table. Quite easy, right? Um, now the next thing is that in digital systems we can't use something like we are trying to design circuits, right? So we can use S0, S1, S1, S2, S2, S3 within our states. We have to encode it using binary numbers, or we have to encode it using uh, um, 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 kind of um, bits, either one or a zero. So how do we encode our states? So we have to encode uh, our state by using uh, an encoding method. The first encoding method is what is known as the binary encoding. Right. So we have to use a method to encode our states. So binary encoding. So in binary encoding, all we look out for is uh, how many states do we have. We have state S0, state S1. State S2 and then state S3. So we have a total of four states, right? Once we have a total of four states, you can use how many bits? Um, how many bits can we use to represent these four states? We can use two bits to represent these four states. And what are these two bits? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So we can use this to represent the state so now we can just say that um, state state s0 is 00 
state s1 is 0 1 state s2 is 1 0 and then state s3 is 1 1 we have simply encoded it right so as it can be seen on the slide state s1 is 0 0 and then state s3 is 1 1 so after that we have to actually uh, replace all the s0 to s3 and then here s0 to s3 with our encoded uh, with our state encoding right now this is just one method of encoding which is the binary we have another method known as the one hot encoding method right in the one hot encoding method what happens is that we look at the number uh, of states we have state um, s0 s1 s2 s3 now we are going to make sure that um, we select each we use we, we use um, the bits that represents each state so for instance we have um uh, we have we have four states so we're going to use four bits to represent um um our states and then each each encoding will make sure that only one bit is selected at a time so for here if you have we have zero 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 this is four bits this is representing one state we have zero zero one zero this is also four bits right and then this is also representing one state one state now what happens is that um because we are making sure that only one um only one of the states is selected we have to start from zero 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 one this means that one state is selected then zero zero one zero another state is selected then zero one zero zero another state is selected and then one then one zero 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 right so this just means that this is state s0 state s1 state s2 and state s3 right so in state s3 all the other states are deactivated and then we only have one selected here state s1 is 0 0 1 0 state s2 is 0 1 0 0 state s3 is 1 0 0 0 now here we can see that there are clear difference between this and this um one one is that um one difference is that this the one what encoding kind of um method uses a lot of uses more bits more than the binary encoding that will actually mean that uh, um the one what encoding um a, a state register uh, will be bigger than the binary encoding state register but it means that uh, if you use only um, if you're activating one uh, using uh, the one whole encoding the circuit uh, for the one whole port equation would be actually simpler to design than the circuit for the binary encoding right so here we are using one uh, we are using the, the the binary encoding here so we just replace the s0 to s3 with what we encoded it with right so here we we, we replaced um our s0 s1 with 0 0 0 0 so 0 0 0 0 is state s0 um 0 1 is state s um 1 i think 1 0 1 0 here is state s2 and then 1 1 is state s3 we've just replaced um our encoded state and then we have just replaced the s's within our encode uh, within our state transition with what we encoded right it's as simple as that now from here what do we do right our next step is we have to look at we have to look through the table what we are looking for is a circuit to design our next state logic so um you have to look through this is a troop a troop table um, which is also the transition the state transition table so what um value here tends or activates the next state so we have the next state s1 bar and s0 bar so we have to go through our troop table and use and write the boolean expression 
for the next state and then this boolean expression will be what will be used to design our next state logic so we have our first one which is s1 bar right the next state bar now go to the go to the truth table and see uh, where there is a one in our next state so we start with our s1 bar you see that there's a one here a one here a one here so what is the boolean expression to express this we have um i think uh, we have so we are looking here right that, that that is our first one so it is um s1 bar right um s0 right so s1 bar dot s0 um that is our first one plus now we move to the second one our second one is here which now you see that um here we have s1 bar and the s0 but we have don't case uh, within the chain to be so we don't actually involve them in our boolean expression now we come here the next one is um this one we have s1 bar so s1 bar dot um is it s1 bar no it's just s1 all right dot um s0 bar dot here the t is considered before we have tb to be zero right and then we have t b bar right and then our next one is this one one here which is s1 dot um s0 bar dot um tv right it's as simple as that so you have to write down your boolean expression and if you can simplify it you have to first of all simplify it before you continue so yeah that is what is being done here right the s1 bar we write the boolean expression for the s1 bar which is here now we have to and again write the boolean expression for our s0 bar here the s0 bar has only two uh, only two points where there is a one so we write for here with one here it will be um s1 bar s0 bar and then ta bar and then for here you have s1 s0 bar and then tb bar it's as simple as that right so this is um the expression for our next state but we can actually simplify it uh, because we've already said it, the digital knowledge, you can use your knowledge in the digital knowledge to simplify this S1. And then this S1 is simply S1, X, or S0. Right? It's as simple as that, which the simplified version of that. If that's the, the simplified version. So with this, we have got, we've used our state um, transition, or our state diagram to get our state transition um, table. From our state transition table we've been able to get our boolean expressions and then these boolean expressions are just the logic gates that will be used to design our next state logic All right now after we've after we've gotten our next state logic we have to also look at our output logic which is here All right now we said that our output from this circuit here our output logic uh, the input to our output logic is just the states right so here we need an output table the output table will be made up of only the current state only the state because the output logic depends on only the state now here the most important thing to know is, is that we are using the more machine in which we said that the output um, depends on only the state if this was a merely machine the input to the output logic will be the state and the inputs so it will be the current state and then the inputs ta and tb but here since we are using a more fsm we are using only the current state right that is why we have only the current state here okay now we have our outputs and then our outputs are actually la and lb so our outputs are within the state so each output is within the state we have la lb within s0 s1 
S2 and S3. So that, that those are our output LA and LB. And then our output has um, these um, three colors: red, green, red, green, and yellow. Right. So those are the outputs from the traffic light. Right. So now we start off with um, the current state, which is zero zero. Zero zero is simply state S zero. In state S zero, our output, um, which is L A and L B, is green and red. As you can see, it's simply green and red. Then state zero one, which is state S one, is yellow and red. And then state S two, which is one zero, is red and green. And then state S two is red and yellow right so this is how you just simply get your output table or the values in within your output table now yet again you can use green red yellow red red green and red yellow to design any circuit so you have to include these colors um, into uh, binary logic right one or zero so here again we're using the binary encoding how many how many colors do you have three how many bits can we use to represent um those three colors it's two bits i think one will be extra but we're using two bits so we encode that green is zero zero yellow is zero one and red is one zero right so we just have to replace these encoded values within our output table right and then this is what we will get you get because we're using two bits and then we have LA and LB. We will have LA1, LA0, LB1, and LB0. And then we just put in the values within our output table. Yet again, we have to we have to now start finding um we now have to go through our this is a system, this is simply a truth table. Go to the truth table to to determine the boolean logic for each output so we start off with la right now once you go through la we see that la is simply so la1 is equal to what you can see that where is there one on LA1? It's at this point and this point. So we have um, S1. We have S1 and then S0 bar dot um, S1, S0. So you can simplify this logic by bringing your s1 out so s1 into bracket s0 bar um plus s0 right once you look at the laws of the boolean expression s0 bar and s1 s0 bar and s0 is simply one so one dot s1 will be s1 so la1 will simply be s1 you can also just look at you can also just look within look at the circuit and realize that oh um um anytime anytime um anytime um anytime the current state is one right you can simply look through our state uh, our output table and, re and realize that if we will look at la1 uh, anytime the la1 just follows the s1 so you see that s1 is 0 0 1 1 our la1 is 0 0 1 1 so you can just simply write that la1 is equal to s1 but you can go through this logic also or the, the boolean equation to also find that it gives you the same output right next you will have to find what LA0 is right. LA0, um, LA0 is here. The only place that's a one is um, S1 bar S0, right? Our next is um, LB1, 
right lb1 is just s1 but once you look through the circuit you can see that um, um you can see that um, the lb1 is just s1 bar right it's just a complement of s1 so just look just look at it if here is if you have a zero zero here we have a one one here if you have a one one here we have um a zero zero here so the lb the lb is just s1 bar yeah, simple like that and then the lb0 is a s1 dot s0 so these are the equation for the output table right so now we simply this is the overview of the schematic we are trying to draw now we we have seen the output logic uh, boolean expressions we have seen the output um Log the next state logic a uh, boolean expression we have seen the output logic boolean expression so we are now going to draw a circuit that incorporates uh, um, that will replace this here with the boolean logic and then this here with our output logic we found so first of all we have this is our state register we started off with our state register right and then our state register has input um, the next state which is s1 bar s0 bar it has output s1 s0 clock reset now we're going to use the boolean expressions we found um in the in the in the transition uh, table to feed into this um, next state s1 bar and s0 right so the boolean expression is s1 exclusive for s0 so once you take S1 here, this is S1 bar. Once you take S1 bar here, this is S1 bar. S1 bar is S1 exclusive for S0. So we have an exclusive OR gate here. We have S1 routed to it. And then S0 here also routed to it. Now next we take S0 bar. We know that S0 bar is S1 bar. S0 bar and TA. This we can implement with an AND gate with three inputs and then we have an OR gate and then another um, AND gate with another three inputs so this is the logic here which implements the S0 bar next we have to find or we have to use the boolean expressions we found um, for the output logic and then we just replace it or we just um, route the S1 and then S0 S1 and S0 are just the current state we just route them to the outputs now first of all la1 is our first um, output so la1 is simply s1 so we see that there's no gate connected with it it's just simply a line now we have our la0 for our la0 we have s1 bar that's why we have a note here s1 bar and um, s0 so s1 bar s0 will be our la1 and then we have our lb1 our LB1 is just a complement of S1. So you have a node gate here, right? We have a node uh, or an inverter here, and then we connect the S1 to it, and then it will, it will be routed to the output. And then for the last one, which is LB0, we have um, LB0 is S1. So we take S1 and S0, that will be the output. So this is the FSM schematic take for for a more um there's a more FSS schematic of the traffic light um, scenario right all right so this is a timing diagram i want you to go and study on your own it's um it's simply um it's simply um this cycle by cycle what happens um, within um, the FSM right so you can go in and actually study it on your own and if you don't understand anything you can you can ask me about it now we've already looked at um, the state encoding as I said we have um, um, the binary encoding which is also known as fully encoded we have one hot encoding and then we have the output encoding so if you take the switch traffic light which has four states 
green, yellow, red, and yellow slash red. We are we will take you first of all look at the banner encoding for the first traffic light. Now, the banner encoding, which is also the full encoding, uses a um, minimum number of states. So, um, if you have log two to the number of states bits, it represented. Uh, represent each state. So if you have the traffic lights, um, the switch traffic light which has four states, you can use 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1 to represent those states. Now, this, if you use a system like this or an encoding like this, it will minimize the number of flip flops, right? That is going to be used. The number of flip flops that is going to be used, use just uh, you already know that within the state register that we, that we use, the state registers that we use to store our Next, uh, to use to latch our next state to our to our state um, is made up of flip flops. So once the lesser the, the number of bits to the flip flop, the lesser the number of uh, the lesser the, the input to the state register. The state register is made of flip flops. So the lesser the input to the um, to the state register, the lesser the number of flip flops that will be used. So this um, state encoding minimizes the the number of flip flops, but it doesn't also actually mean that the output logic or the next state logic is minimized because it has uh, the state encoding um, uh, um, has no impact on the um, on the output logic and then in the next state logic we also have the one host encoding uh, in which i as i explained as i explained it uses the number of state bits to represent a state so if you have a uh, four states um, the number of bits will be about four will, will be four if you have five states it will be five six six now an example is if you have if you're using the traffic like example we have four states so you have zero 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 to represent one state zero zero one zero to represent one state zero one zero to represent another state and one zero zero to represent another state um this is very very simple design right and then but here the number of flip-flops is increased it's increased it uses um, a number of flip-flops and then once um the number of flip-flops is increased but then the um, because we are using all uh, um, the state the, to activate um, a state only one bit is selected the next state um, logic is also minimized right. now the next one is um output encoding we can out we can encode our output um using the one the binary encoding method right for example since we have three output which is the lights red green and yellow you can have um three bits to represent our output zero zero one zero one zero one zero zero and one one zero now bit zero will encode the green light uh, output bit one encodes the yellow light output and then bit two encodes the the red light output this will minimize the output logic it's, it's higher to just minimize the output logic and then this is actually used in only the more machine this is not used in Merely machine. So as a designer, you will have to look at um, which machine to use and then which encoding method to use to minimize the number of logic gates that will be used in your design. So that is the end of this lecture. Thank you.